Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode eight of our fall 2016 virtual office hours. My name is John Fee. I teach American history here at Psy College. Our producer, Abby Blakeney, is here behind the camera. Uh, coming off of fall break, we took a week off last week. I don't know if anyone even noticed, but we didn't have an office hours up last week. Uh, but we are continuing our series this fall, along here with the Founding Fathers Pez Dispensers, uh, on uh, our class on the American Revolution. Abby's in that class as well, so she gets a double dose of, of listening to me talk about the Revolution. Uh, we have been working our way up through the 1760s and 1770s, and then finally, uh, today we hit 1776, and our reading for today, or at least the reading that we discussed today, uh, was the Declaration of Independence. Now one of the things that whenever you talk about the Declaration of Independence, uh, you are talking about a document that what historian Pauline Meyer uh, has called American Scripture. Uh, many people turn to the uh, Declaration of Independence uh, for those early statements in the first couple paragraphs, the idea that we are endowed by our Creator with inalienable rights, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness or the famous statement that all men are created equal. And Meyer has shown that uh, these ideals uh, are kind of the, the sacred uh, ideals. The Declaration of Independence is a sacred text uh, for many Americans, much like scripture. The Bible is a text uh, for Christians. Um, but what we tried to do today is to, to think a little bit more about the Declaration of Independence and its kind of original intent. And uh, what we argued, and we had, uh, we had some help here from an essay we read uh, by the historian David Armitage, uh, we, we, we tried to think about the Declaration of Independence in terms of what it was originally designed for, and that means thinking about it in its global context. So the Declaration of Independence, as much as it sets forth ideals and values that we have come to define uh, as American ideals and values, we tried to stress that these values were not necessarily new uh, to the British colonists. They were long-standing uh, values like liberty and the right to life and, and property and so forth, the pursuits of happiness, I should say, um, that were long-standing British uh, traditions. So it always fascinates me, in 1825, this letter that Thomas Jefferson, the primary author of the Declaration of Independence, wrote to uh, his fellow Virginian, Henry Lee. And in this letter, Jefferson explains his motivation behind writing the Declaration. He says, When forced, therefore, to resort to arms for redress, an appeal to the tribunal of the world was deemed proper for our jurisdiction. This was the object of the Declaration of Independence not to find out new principles or new arguments never before thought of, but to place before mankind the common sense of the subject, in terms so plain and firm as to command their assent and to justify ourselves in the independent stand we are compelled to take. So we talked about the American Revolution, uh, and specifically the Declaration of Independence today, uh, in terms of its global significance. We thought about it as a diplomatic or a foreign policy document. Its original intent was to announce to the world that the American colonies were indeed, the British colonies were indeed independent now of Great Britain. Uh, and it served a purpose to sort of announce these universal ideals that uh, the, the uh, revolution was built upon, but also to uh, call attention to the fact that, you know, perhaps there are some nations out there who may want to come to the aid of the colonies now that they have officially declared independence. So as, as, as Meyer points out in her great book, American Scripture, um, it's not until the 19th century that the American, uh, I should say the Declaration of Independence, becomes this kind of scripture when it's employed by people like Abraham Lincoln in the Gettysburg Address or the abolitionist movements, people like William Lloyd Garrison or the women's rights movement, especially the Declaration of the Rights of Women put forth at the Seneca Falls Convention, that the ideas in the sort of so-called preamble or the first couple paragraphs of the Declaration of Independence become so important. We often think of the original intent of the United States Constitution and we debate over those things, but we often don't talk about the original intent of the Declaration of Independence, a, glo a global document that was meant as a foreign do po policy document for the purpose of doing just what the title of the document says, to declare independence uh, to the world. 
So again, uh, we had a little lesson in historical thinking and contextual thinking, thinking about the Declaration of Independence, not as we understand it today or as we understand it as it was filtered through the 19th and 20th centuries, but understood in the context of the 18th century. So we're continuing to move forward here. We'll start getting a little bit into the Revolutionary War uh, next week, and we will see you then on the virtual office hours. Thank you.